All right, I think we're we're getting pretty much ready to get started on how to start a school garden and keep it going. It's great to see you all. Um, thank you for tuning in today. I see we have um, some some educators and some people in the audience from New York City and the Bronx. We've got someone from Queens, Rockaway, um, Brooklyn, New York City, and someone from Texas as well. So this is this is pretty fun. Um, just a few uh, housekeeping things as we get started. We are gonna do a Q&A at the end of the workshop. So if you have questions, you'll be able to either put them in the chat or you can unmute at the end and we'll take questions that way. While we're doing the workshop, please keep your mics muted, but feel free to communicate through the chat. We are recording this workshop and we'll be posting it later. If you don't wanna be included in the recording, um, then you shouldn't have your camera on or unmute, but as long as you're muted, you won't show up on the recording. Uh, we're gonna send you a follow-up email tomorrow. So everything that we're going over today, don't feel like you have to take photos of it or take notes. We'll send you the slides as well as additional resources that we mentioned throughout the workshop. So you'll have all of that tomorrow. Um, and you can always find more resources on our website, grownycdistancelearning.org. That will all be um, available on our website there. So without further ado, let's get started. Next slide. We're Grow NYC. We protect the environment, create green spaces, and help people stay healthy and give them opportunities to make a positive impact. Grow NYC is an environmental nonprofit and we work in a lot of different sectors, including conservation, which includes zero waste programs and composting. We work with green spaces and creating more of them all throughout the city. We do food access and agriculture work. You might know some of our green markets. We have over 50 green markets and many other food access sites throughout the city. And we also have our education programs, which you're all a part of today. Um, and uh, we're specifically today the school gardens team. So let's look at our school gardens program. We inspire, facilitate, and promote the creation of sustainable school gardens in K through 12 public schools across New York City. The school gardens program of Grow NYC has been around for about 12 years. And in, the, in that time, we've worked with over 900 school gardens in all five boroughs. Next slide. So, this is our team that we have here today. I'm Laura Casaragola with the School Gardens team. Um, my regions are Lower Manhattan and Brooklyn schools. Uh, we also are going to be hearing from Jinky, who works with Upper Manhattan and Bronx schools, as well as Colleen Graves, who works with the schools in Queens and Staten Island. In the first part of today's workshop, we're, we'll go over these steps for how to start a school garden, share ideas and gain support, create a vision, goals, and garden team, how to analyze the garden site and create a map and a budget, how to fundraise and secure materials, and then how to build it all and grow. Then for the second part of the workshop, um, we'll take a behind the scenes look at what happens next. Once you have your garden built, how can you keep it going? So in those two slides, I very neatly laid out some numbered steps for how to do a school garden, but I can almost guarantee you it's not such a linear process. School gardens are as unique as New York City and the people who steward them. The reality is there's no one size fits all and different schools are confronting different types of challenges and there are so many different ways to garden. This workshop is meant to outline the general steps, but remember to expect the unexpected. School gardens are dynamic spaces that will have all sorts of phases. So it's good to be flexible, creative, dream big, and have fun throughout the process. To support you on your school garden journey, we are really excited because we just published the Grow NYC School Gardens Handbook. Um, we're debuting it today at this workshop. So thank you so much for, for checking it out with us. Over the years, um, 
we get asked a lot of questions and we ourselves have learned so much from interacting with all these different types of school gardens. So we decided to write it all down um, to help you at every step of the way and every phase of your garden. So let's take a closer look at the handbook, which is published on our website. You all have access to this. Um, it's a comprehensive guide that is a compilation of 10 plus years of experience working with over 900 schools. We've distilled best practices, resources, technical considerations, and more into one place. So this can be helpful whether you're on a brand new school garden journey, um, or if you're at a school garden that is trying to redo one that has been vacant for a few years, or if you're trying to expand um, and do a different new type of gardening. Uh, all of that is covered in the handbook. So Colleen, do you want to take us on a on a screen share and show the website so that people can find this? So after the workshop today, like this is already up here, you'll be able to see it. So we're on grownycdistancelearning.org and you go to the school garden guides and that is where you'll be able to find our guides. And so these two, we're gonna be going over a little more in depth today. Um, so we have the school gardens handbook and a year in the life. But as you can see, there's a lot of other things on there that um, we hope people can explore on their own and uh, find other resources as well that might be helpful to you on there. So that's great. Thanks, Colleen. This is a list of the topics that are covered in the guide. Um, and this slide is not even including our appendix, which is filled with worksheets, carpentry plans, and templates. We are only here for an hour today, so we don't have time to go over all of these topics, but I'd love to hear in the chat, um, like which of these topics is on your mind? Uh, do you see anything that's jumping out at you? Like, oh, that's exactly what I wanted to work on this year. That's what I wanted to learn from this, you know, workshop or work with Grow NYC on. So take a look. Um, we have quite a few topics. An example would be maybe you're someone who already has a school garden and you want to figure out new ways to use the harvest. So we have a whole section on using the harvest at your school garden. So you can do cooking, sampling classes um, with students. We have ways of how you can donate to mutual aid in your neighborhood. We also have info on how to set up a farm stand at your school, how to do nutrition education. Um, so we have all of that really detailed info um, and more in the guide. Uh, so you can put anything in there that you is kind of jumping out at you. You know, a lot of people are really into rooftop gardens this year, we've noticed. Um, and, you know, people always want curriculum integration and stuff like that. And we're also happy to answer questions today um, during the Q&A. So Jinky, I can't see the chat right now. Do you want to, did anyone put in things that they're interested in? Yeah, so I think it's Katie's has special ed, budget, fundraising, partnering with the community garden. And we have, again, starting the school garden, partnering with neighborhood garden, fundraising, common themes. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Um, and I will say the partnering with the community garden, we have a very long section on that because we included a template of like an agreement you can make kind of like a contract or, you know, community agreement with the community garden um, so that you can work together and collaborate. Yeah, we've also got curriculum integration. <laughs> And Amanda, we're actually having a workshop on that in November, so stay tuned. All right, that sounds awesome. So if you have, you know, more specific questions about this stuff, hang around for the Q&A and we're happy to answer. For now, let's go on to the next slide. So step one of starting a garden is outreach and forming a committee that can sustain itself and the garden over time. The garden committee will be responsible for supporting the educational program within the school, as well as the garden's physical space. So you'll, if you're working at a school, you'll need to at least have um, approval from you know, your administration and custodial staff. So those are usually the first people that you're gonna be talking with. 
Um, but it's a, it's a good idea to get as many stakeholders as you can to get involved as well. So looking around at your school, your wider school community and trying to find people that can carry this vision together. So you, it's always good to look at the sustainability coordinators. Some of our schools have wellness councils um, that have members, teachers, parents, caregivers, and others. Um, Jinky is going to elaborate on this garden committee a bit later on and all of the work that they do throughout the year to keep the garden going. Next slide. Once you have a group of folks on board with the garden, um, you can start to develop a shared mission statement. This is a great way to focus on the important big ideas for your school garden. It'll determine how you go about the rest of the planning process and what you end up including in the vision. Each school garden mission statement is going to be different and you want everyone to feel that their voice is heard um, so that the goals are shared. So this is just an example from IS68 in Brooklyn. To provide students and staff with a hands-on tool for learning, engage students in discussions, inspire our school community to learn more about the origin of food and what's healthy, and share our harvest with our school and neighborhood community. So this is one example. Um, maybe your school is not interested in sharing the harvest, uh, or maybe you're not even doing a vegetable garden, maybe you're doing a pollinator garden, in which case your mission statement will be very different. So leaving time to discuss and see what people really want to see at the school is important. Next slide. So your next step um, would be site assessment. Conducting a site assessment helps you figure out where to grow, how much space you have, what you can fit, and other determining factors. If you've never done a site analysis or assessment before, we describe this step-by-step -step in our handbook and we, we list out the things to look for. Um, it'll make you think through physical features and things that you maybe wouldn't consider at, upon first thought. So you're gonna be looking at the spacing between you know, your garden beds. You wanna look at the sun and where it's hitting cardinal directions and movable objects that you're gonna to have to you know, maneuver around where your water source is and things like that. Um, once you have are doing your site assessment, that's kind of at the same time, you'll be able to make a map of the site. Um, and so these are just two examples of school garden maps. And so you can get fancy or you can just hand draw them, um, whatever works for you. Next slide. Once you do a site assessment and make a map, you'll have a clear idea of what supplies you'll need. So now you can research how much everything will cost. We have, in the handbook, we have um, school garden sample budgets. And this is just one of them that I pulled out of the handbook, but we have you know different ones in there. Um, you may end up making multiple budgets even. So you might want a low cost plan and a higher cost plan based on how much money you're able to raise for this year for this project. Um, and then remember always to factor in delivery cost. And uh, there, there you have your budget. So let's go on and see about fundraising for that budget. Now that you know what you want and how much it'll cost, fall is actually the best time to start fundraising. Um, a lot of us consider fall to be grant season because that's when we end up seeing a majority of the grants opening up. Um, you can still fundraise throughout the rest of the year and there are grants every month of the year and we keep an eye on those. We put them in our newsletter each month so that you can always have some source to look into. But fall is a really good time. So it's great that you're here now because this will give you enough time in advance so that you can raise money and have a plan for next spring. We sometimes will we'll get calls like in March from someone who's like, I wanna build a school garden for Earth Day like in six weeks. And that generally is not enough time to do all of these steps that I just laid out. So this is does require planning at least a season or two in advance so that you know what you're doing, you have the support you need throughout the school, you you um, have time to fundraise and do all of these steps. Um, I will mention that 
Uh, if you are a DOE public school, you should keep an eye out for their grant that's coming out in sometime in mid-October. They do a grant every fall, um, so you can get money from that for a school garden. And so it hasn't been announced yet, but keep an eye. Um, we also, you know, Grow NYC School Gardens, we occasionally have supplies giveaways for schools that are registered with us. Um, so that's a great reason for you to register with us and sign up for our newsletter. And we can also advise you where to find free or low cost resources throughout the city because we've spent some time compiling this list. Next slide. All right, so once you have all of these planning things in place, um, you're kind of ready for a build day. So build days take some time to plan um, and getting materials can involve a lot of a lot of prep work based on you know what kind of garden you're building. So we have a whole section in the handbook um, and a checklist for how to plan out like a communal build day to get your your vision realized. Next. And then after lots of hard work, you went through the steps, you dodged some curveballs, um, you've gathered support, you hopefully now have a garden space to grow in and enjoy. So next I'll um, pass it over to Jinky to talk about how to keep it going. Thanks, Laura. So, you know, in order to stay, sustain your garden over time, it's critical that they are deeply integrated within the school community. You'll need all the help that you could get. Um, again, Laura mentioned getting your admin support is key. So make sure you have that. Um, clearly defined strategies and tools are needed to support access or success for the people who invest considerable time effort and funding into these gardens. And of course, the children who benefit from them. Um, a plan must be in place for who will maintain the garden. Our other new resource, a year in the life of the school garden, will guide you to keep the garden going. So again, you'll find this in our distance learning webpage. And next slide, please. Great. So this is what it looks like a year in the life of garden. Um, maintaining a school garden isn't as simple as it looks. There are multiple facets that are involved and tasks are not always linear. So you might be planning for a bill that's coming up in March, but you have to start planning now, you have to fundraise for it. Um, so it's, it's not linear. There's multiple things going on at the same time. Um, this guide will guide you and we detail garden tasks for each month and go behind the scenes with garden committee meetings, budgeting, um, events, and fundraising to keep the school garden sustainable for the long term. We also include tips on how students can help in the garden and seasonal activities to give, um, keep them engaged. So again, GrowNYC, distancelearning.org. Next slide. And as Laura stated earlier, also a successful element to a school garden program is the creation of an active garden committee that can sustain itself over time. And the main task of the committee members will be to oversee the creation of the garden and assist in the physical stewardship of the garden through seasons on an as needed basis. So maintenance throughout the year. Um, monthly meetings must take place in order to plan for each season, have a garden rep, it's usually the garden committee chair at each PA meeting, and you can present what the garden is uh, doing at that time. Fundraising for the school garden meets the basic needs of a garden, like buying seeds and seedlings, and um, leading events throughout the year contribute to community development. And a uh, school garden cannot exist with the efforts of a working garden committee uh, full of dedicated volunteers to help steward the space through the years. You need to create subcommittees so no one person or a small group is in charge of everything. 
you'll want to play to people's strengths instead of assigning rules to keep a high level of engagement. For example, there's a parent in my son's school who writes grants for her job. So she volunteered to be the chair for the grant committee. And that was fantastic. We didn't even have to assign the roles. So you never know what talent each person has that can be utilized within the committee. Next slide. Okay, so next one, engaging the students. Um, the school garden is not only a space for the community, but more importantly, it's a space for the students. It's an outdoor classroom where students can connect with nature and have a space for creative exploration. Um, even though math and science are a natural fit in the garden, all classes are welcome in this space. The outdoor classroom can be used for reading circles, meditation, exercise, some unstructured free time, and also as an art studio. If you've got a lot of things growing, um, you can have kids draw or you can have them design the signs for the garden beds. So it's a fantastic outdoor classroom. Um, the school garden should be well integrated into the daily school life and should be accessible to all classes. You know, you, it's not just for after school or just for the weekends for families, but it should be for all classes. I, again, like it's another extension of the school. It's an outdoor classroom. Um, you can have teachers reserve time in the garden through sign-up sheets. And garden educators are sometimes hired by schools to provide garden lessons that complement and, and or supplement for content that sometimes regular teachers may not have time to teach. Um, so you know, having someone like that, if your school can afford it, would keep the level of engagement by students really high. I also teach uh, a garden education class and whenever I see my students in the neighborhood, they're always excited to come into the garden. Okay, next slide. And um, another side of engaging, you also wanna engage the community. And a school garden is an ideal location to bring the school and larger community together. Uh, host, host some general community events in the school garden space so everyone can enjoy and help build neighborhood relationships. It's a great place for it. Um, it's important to do this because social ties are formed and a greater feeling of community is built. And these connections help reduce crime, empower residents, and allow residents to feel safe in their neighborhoods. So um, we actually have our, a previous workshop this past spring um, gardens as community hubs to learn more about building community and community gardens. So you are more than welcome to check that out. Um, community events can be done as fundraiser events to help fund the, the garden. They can be themed based on the season. It's autumn now, so uh, Halloween's around the corner. You can have a pumpkin painting event, something fun. Um, and it's also important to have volunteer days for planting, harvesting, cleanups, and maintenance. It may seem simple, but it really does take a village to do all the tasks needed within with the upkeep of the school garden. You can hold open community hours for the neighborhood to also enjoy the school garden. And this could be another way to get volunteers to help with the garden. So make sure you know you open it to the whole community, not just the school community. Yeah, next slide. I mentioned earlier seasonal maintenance. Um, we wanna point out that these tasks can be specific to a certain month within a particular season all year round. And it really isn't a simple task. And this is where having a subcommittee comes in handy. Um, have one that's responsible for the upkeep of the garden. You know, you'll want one for like the grant writing, you'll want one for events, fundraisers, and definitely have one for garden maintenance. Um, if you do hire a garden educator,
make sure to plan with that educator to see what needs to be done so that kids can partake in the care of the garden. Um, create eight crop plans for the growing season so that um, well, that will include crop rotation. So you get the most of the growing season and not just you know spring or summer and you can have it growing for most of the year. And last, you most tasks include having a watering schedule, weeding, and infrastructure maintenance. And next slide. So this is a sample of what the fall months look like for garden maintenance. Um, you can see in September, we've got harvesting going on. Um, as temperatures fall, you want to water based on and you water less frequently based on, you know, again, the weather, how dry or how, um, how much rainfall we get. So we have on September, October, November, and we have this for all the months and you can find it in a year in the life. Next slide. Okay, so last but not least, you'll want to assess and plan for the following year and for the future years. Think about what is working well and what can be improved. You want to keep anecdotes and photos of the garden for grant writing purposes um, and you know for future committees so that you can refer to what happened through for the garden throughout the years. You might want to expand the garden and we'll have to plan for those projects. So for example, if the garden doesn't have a composting system and maybe next season, you'll want to add a three bin compost system. So kind of plan for at least a season ahead. Um, it takes time to get the materials. It takes time to do the build. Um, plan for one to five years down the road and how these plans can be passed on to the next set of committee members. Again, that sustainability aspect. Um, we've got a green, which stands for Garden Resources, Education and Environmental Nexus Tool. And that highlights how it can be used to strengthen and school, uh, strengthen school gardens. You can find that in the resources link at the end of our presentation. Next, we have Colleen to show how we at Grow NYC can help you start your school garden. Uh, okay, hi everyone. Um, so at our program, uh, which is free to join and also free to access our web or workshops, whatnot, um, on the screen you can see sort of all the ways we're here to support teachers and parents um, in New York City to start and maintain a school garden. Um, we offer a host of workshops, mostly virtual these days, although uh, we're actually having an in-person workshop in November um, coming up. Uh, consultations, we're kind of, um, we're free. We're here to answer any questions you have anywhere along your school garden journey. Um, some of us are practicing school gardeners, some are just long time gardeners. Jinky has mentioned she's also a school garden educator. So our whole entire team has a wealth of knowledge on this. And we work closely with the Department of Sustainability to kind of keep, keep our, our ears out for resources on the ground. Who's giving away free bulbs in the city? Who might have free mulch? Or how can we get you some compost? Um, we're just sort of this information resource and we're here to just sort of just sell it to y'all uh, for free. Um, there's rats in my garden. We can help you how to get rats away from your garden, anything. Um, sometimes we give giveaways throughout the year. Uh, sometimes we have funding opportunities we can tap into. Uh, also in our monthly newsletter, we have a grant section where we track all the open grants whether they're local grants, some are national grants, all related to school garden. Um, so that's a great resource to sign up for our newsletter and you'll have month by month um, real-time knowledge of what's available. And then again, our distance learning website just is chock full of stuff. Um, 
there's some ability for site visits. Um, so that's for registered gardens. And it comes after sort of working together to see if there's a lot that can be troubleshoot without that. Um, so registering, it's a free program. It does grant you some extra support. Um, you can visit our website. We do ask if you can have a garden map. Um, don't be intimidated. You can hand draw it. It can be a sketch. Um, it can be obviously more sophisticated than that, but we sort of accept all kinds, quite frankly. Uh, we do ask for an administrator um, letter of support from the principal. Our website does have a template that you can personalize to your school. But this really lets us know that the principal knows that there's a garden program happening. Um, and so that, you know, if we sort of show up for a meeting or we our materials are coming your way, it's not an out of the blue surprise that may not be appreciated. Uh, we also ask for some basics on what type of gardening you're doing, just some basics, um, whether it's a rooftop, whether it's outdoor beds or your indoor hydroponic gardening. We just like to keep tabs on what are the schools in the city are doing, and that can help us focus what information we need to be aware of and what resources we can best provide to um, the folks in the city who are gardening. Um, you can do a list of garden committee members as well. M more than one person can have access to these school accounts. Um, so don't be shy on that front. And also if you are maybe restarting a garden at your school and don't, and it's clear there's a, an account in our program already, but that person maybe is no longer with the school, or you don't know the passcode, just email us. And we're happy to troubleshoot that on our end um, through our database. That's really easy to get y'all access to an, an account. Um, quickly, I'll go over specifically for those folks who have to follow DOE procurement um, rules. We've worked with the Department of Sustainability to kind of create a list of DOE vendors as well as a list on shop DOE of um, preferred kind of garden items that are out there. And so I'll just sort of highlight, these are also on our website in, um, oh, is it not coming? Darn it. Oh, there we go. So we'll scroll down. And this is, this was, a, this tries to get updated uh, monthly if we can. It's a working list of folks we know that you, teachers can buy through the DOE procurement procedures, vendors, some national brands. Um, I'm just going to scroll real quickly because you can spend time with it, as well as folks that we know who are doing um, garden education, providing that in case your school wants to take advantage of that. Um, some are held, some the educator will come to you. Sometimes you have to go to an offsite location. Um, it's a working list, and I'll just say that teachers, if those of you who are on the call, if you encounter a vendor that we don't know about that's not on the list, feel free to let us know. We'll throw it up on the list, no problem. Um, you're the one with real-time knowledge. Um, I'm taking you to the shop DOE um, spreadsheet that we have on our website as well. And I'll show you in a minute where you can actually find this on the website. But we've been able, this was updated as August, I believe, to where it said, and we have different spreadsheets different tabs at the bottom that take you to different resources on Shop DOE. Uh, I apologize, my internet's a little slow. Um, but it's pricing as of August. Some things you'll see will disappear quickly. Um, we had that happen in the spring when a lot of people got their grant money. We had this updated and then like, a few weeks later, it was all sold out of garden stuff. So I know Shop DOE is a work in progress. It's not perfect. Um, I'm sure we've also maybe missed garden items. It um, changes on us a lot. It's hard to keep up with, but it's there for y'all. And I'll just take you again to our website. In the school gardens guides that we showed you previously, if you scroll all the way down, to where you have this for educators. 
is where you specifically will find DOE vendor material information and the shop DOE, as well as a host of other items. I am going to scroll right back up. So I do want to show also on our website, we focused on the garden guides, but under resources for workshops and blogs, you'll find the link to past workshops. We've done definitely since uh, COVID hit, there's been lots of like workshops on compost, pollinator gardens, um, rat workshops, anything and everything. So kind of scroll back through. If you have a question, it's probably buried on our website. Uh, we also have a couple specific curriculums, food justice curriculum, if you're interested in that, a recently published farm, span, farm stand business curriculum. Um, so that's with students, real time, uh, professionally produced. You'll also find information to other program, the education programs. A lot of folks like to visit the teaching garden on Governor's Island. They're open for um, field trips. I believe the fall season is actually filled out. Um, so more space coming in spring, but their wealth of information. Um, so I don't want you to be shy about doing that. And then I will purposely, if this comes up, I do want folks to see what our, our newsletter looks like because it gives you real time updates monthly of what workshops are happening. Um, sometimes they're even in a different education program for us. So like curbside composting is coming to the Bronx schools for any of our Bronx educators on the call might be interested in that. Um, October, we'll have another garden drop-in hour where anyone's free to call in with a question. I'm gonna scroll down. There's a current giveaway happening if you're registered. And then we highlight our different programs. But I am scrolling quickly because I want to show you. So if you are interested, there's lots of things available to start to take advantage of in addition to the upcoming sustainability grants. Um, there's also places to get free seeds in the city. Um, so there's stuff happening. Um, workshops coming up is again the school garden drop-in hour where the three of us hang out for an hour and you're free to call in with any question about your school garden and we try to answer it very specifically to you um, not just have a global meeting um, but we try to get down to the details that you need answered in that moment. Uh, October is also going to have a farm stand business curriculum that we just just released, um, get an orientation to that. And then the in-person one that Jinky mentioned is actually in partnership with Edible Schoolyards New York. Um, I believe it's one of their locations, right, Jinky? Um, so that's coming up. Yes, it's at PS7 in Harlem. Excellent. Um, and then the easiest way to get to us real quick is school gardens at grownyc.org. And then your question will be answered by the coordinator that your school falls into. Um, so I'll just, we can do almost everything for your school garden and help you create the roadmap and answer, like I said, a gazillion of your questions. We can't build it for you, but we can totally help you plan how to get the best volunteer help. Um, necessary. And in some cases, there are folks that will build school gardens if you just don't have a volunteer pool, but do have the funds to pay for it. Um, that also exists. So we're here to help give you the resources you need wherever you are in your school garden experience. Um, 